Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news of the day. The topic for today is the earthquake that occurred today morning in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, and this gives us an opportunity to understand the seismicity of the Himalayan belt. So, in this short and crisp analysis, let us understand the hazard and vulnerability of the Himalayan region towards earthquakes. See, the topic is in news. Because today morning, an earthquake of magnitude 4.3 on the Richter scale hit the Leh district of Ladakh, and the tremors were felt in the neighboring Jammu and Kashmir as well. In fact, this latest tremor, centered around Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir, is part of a several series of earthquakes that have been reported in the region over the last one month. In the last few weeks itself, several similar earthquakes have been registered. Stretching all the way from Afghanistan to Pakistan, to Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, and Himachal Pradesh of India. This highlights the hazard and vulnerability of the Himalayan belt towards earthquakes, and as well as towards other related secondary disasters. See, the Himalayan belt happens to be one of the most seismically active zone in the world. This is a direct result of the ongoing subduction of the Indian plate. Which is constantly diving under the Eurasian plate at a significantly faster rate, thus turning the entire Himalayan belt into an earthquake hazard zone. This tectonic activity is directly responsible for the highly seismic nature of the Himalayan belt, and as the Indian plate collides with the Eurasian plate and dives under it, it not only pushes up the Himalayan mountains, but also creates an active fault line that stretches all the way from the Karakoram. Near the Afghanistan-Pakistan belt, and stretches all across the Himalayan belt of India, Nepal, Bhutan, which ends up triggering many earthquakes in the region of varying intensities. This is essentially a geological shift that is occurring along the boundary of these two tectonic plates, and this boundary line between the Indian and Eurasian plate has been named as the main Himalayan thrust. Across this main Himalayan thrust line. Tremendous amounts of energy is getting built up over the centuries, and as the various fault lines over here rupture time to time, they release massive quantities of energy that radiates towards the Earth's crust, thus making the region extremely vulnerable towards earthquakes. In fact, earthquakes of mild to moderate intensity are very common across this entire stretch, and every now and then, the region also witnesses moderate to high intensity earthquakes. And many geological experts and their studies have even pointed towards the possibility of a mega earthquake in the region. There has been a long-standing prediction that the Himalayan belt is priming for a mega earthquake because the region has been repeatedly hit by several earthquakes, and just in the Garhwal Himachal Pradesh belt, there have been four destructive moderate to great earthquakes since the beginning of the 20th century. For example. The Kangra earthquake of 1905, the Kinnor earthquake of 1975, the Uttarkashi earthquake of 91, the Chamoli earthquake of 99, and more recently in 2015, the Gorkha earthquake in Nepal, which left behind a trail of destruction in Nepal. In the past few decades itself, several major earthquakes have been reported in Pakistan and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, and as well as in Jammu and Kashmir. Similar incidents have led to major disasters in Uttarakhand, in Nepal, and Sikkim as well. And particularly the northeast of India, that is Assam and Arunachal Pradesh, are also said to be very vulnerable to high-intensity earthquakes. Recent studies have shown that the rate at which a plate is colliding with the other plate directly influences the magnitude and the frequency of earthquakes. And in the case of the Himalayan belt. The Indian plate is diving at a considerably faster rate under the Eurasian plate, thus making this subduction zone a prime area for witnessing a possible mega earthquake in the future. And recent studies have also indicated that the entire pent-up energy is not being released in a timely manner along the fault line, and as a result, more and more energy is getting accumulated along the fault line. So essentially, a pressure cooker-like situation is getting built up under the Himalayan mountains, and this has led geologists and seismologists to conclude 
that the Himalayan belt is prime for a mega earthquake in the future. Then upon this, the region around it, especially the lower Himalayas and the Indo-Gangetic plain, is very prone to disaster risk, considering that these areas are densely populated. From Pakistan to India to Nepal, there are several cities located in this hotspot zone and places like Delhi, Kathmandu, Gangtok and even the densely populated areas of Uttarakhand, Jammu and Kashmir and POK are very vulnerable as in the entire region enough measures have not been taken to make the cities and buildings earthquake proof and earthquake resistant. So as hazard meets vulnerability in this region, the disaster risk goes up significantly and this is clearly highlighted in the earthquake hazard zonation map of India. This map is showing the hazard and vulnerability profile of India towards earthquakes. And as you can see, the entire Himalayan belt falls under zone 4 and zone 5, which represent the highest risk for a potential disaster caused by a mega earthquake. The other concern is that earthquakes tend to trigger secondary disasters such as landslides and avalanches, especially in the hilly and mountainous terrain of the Himalayan belt. Earthquakes and landslides could also lead to flash floods and glacial lake outburst flood events. And these risk factors have also gone up significantly due to anthropological factors. Overexploitation of the region and unplanned and unregulated development in the region has made the entire belt ecologically sensitive and rampant deforestation and urbanization in the hilly region has made it a prime location for landslides, avalanches, flash floods and other related secondary disasters. Hence, it is of utmost importance to put in place the disaster management cycle and to specifically focus on the pre-disaster cycle. At all the levels, that is international, national and local, efforts will have to be made towards mitigation in order to make the region disaster resilient, along with gearing up the during disaster emergency response and relief. And this would require considerable planning and allocation of resources. Even though India has made great strides in disaster management, and even though its disaster management response has improved significantly over the last couple of decades, the country and in fact the entire region is still grossly unprepared to deal with the impact of any such potential mega earthquake. So with this, I would like to conclude today's discussion and I'm also happy to announce that we are going to launch many new exciting initiatives on the Baiju's exam prep IAS channel. And I would like you to take a guess regarding the new initiatives and post your thoughts in the comment section. These new initiatives are primarily designed to help the aspirants, especially the ones who are preparing for upcoming prelims. And we do hope you're going to like and find these initiatives to be useful. So do continue encouraging us and supporting us by liking the videos, by sharing them with fellow aspirants and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.